Information Minister Maryam Aurangzeb has said that the donors had committed to give more than $8 billion to help Pakistan recover from last year's devastating floods. The pledges came as the International Conference on Climate Resilient Pakistan kicked off in Geneva. Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif is co-hosting the conference along with the UN Secretary General Antonio Gutierrez. The purpose of the day-long conference attended by heads of state and government and other stakeholders is to marshal international support to rehabilitate the population affected by super floods and reconstruct damaged infrastructure in a climate-resilient manner. PM Shabazz sought $8 billion from Pakistan's international partners over the next three years to rebuild the country as Gutierrez called for massive support to aid the rebuilding effort. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at a turning point of history. Our funding gap for minimum recovery is $8 billion and will be needed over the span of the next three years. The Premier went on to say that his government had prepared a comprehensive plan for recovery, rehabilitation, reconstruction and resilience, the 4RF. Earlier in his opening remarks at the Geneva Moot, Gutierrez urged the international community for massive investments to help Pakistan. He stressed that rebuilding Pakistan in a resilient way would require $16 billion but added that far more would be required in the long run. Rebuilding Pakistan in a resilient way will run in excess of 16 billion US dollars and far more will be needed in the longer term. Later in the day, PM Shabazz and Gutierrez addressed a joint press conference where the two reiterated the need for the global community to aid Pakistan's recovery. During the press conference, the Premier also expressed Pakistan's commitment to complete the IMF program. At the same time, however, he wondered how the fund could expect him to pass on the burden of inflation to the citizenry that was still reeling from floods. Earlier in a video statement, Turkish President Erdogan said that Turkey was ready to contribute to meeting the immediate needs of disaster victims in Pakistan, as well as supporting the reconstruction process. Addressing the moot via video link, French President Manuel Macron also also vowed to bring in a contribution of $10 million for aid support to Pakistan. In his address at the climate conference, Foreign Minister Bilawal Bhutto Zardari stressed that Pakistan would need considerable support over the next several years to implement a comprehensive plan for flood recovery. Chief of Army Staff General Asim Munir met Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud in Medina and discussed ways to improve bilateral ties between the two countries. General Munir is on a week-long official visit to Saudi Arabia and UAE, the first since his appointment culminating on 10th January. According to the Saudi press agency, Prince Salman welcomed the army chief at the winter camp in Al Ula. The reception was attended by Saudi Defense Minister Prince Khalid bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz and National Security Advisor Dr. Musaid bin Mohammed Al Aban. It added, Pakistan's ambassador to Saudi Arabia, Amir Khurram and other officials were also present. General Munir had last week met Saudi Defense Minister Prince Khalid bin Salman and discussed the ways of strengthening cooperation between the two countries. The leaders had discussed military and defence cooperation and ways to support and enhance them, along with important regional and international issues of common interest. The Election Commission of Pakistan ruled that the local government polls in Karachi, Hyderabad and Tata divisions would be held on 15th January as per the schedule. The verdict was pronounced by the Chief Election Commissioner Sikandar Sultan Raja on a petition filed by the MQM wherein it had challenged the decision of the ECP for the prospective use of two separate electoral polls in the upcoming election simultaneously. At the previous hearing, the ECP had reserved its verdict on the plea. However, a three-member bench headed by Sikandar Sultan Raja had rejected MQM's petition saying that the polls in Karachi, Hyderabad and Tata would be held as per the schedule and on the previous voters list. He directed the Sindh government to complete arrangement for the elections, adding that the chief secretary and the law enforcement agencies should also ensure that the elections were held on time. Shares at the Pakistan Stock Exchange fell with analysts attributing the sell-off of the country's forex reserves dropping to dangerous levels and Finance Minister Isaac Dar's comments giving rise to fears that the government may confiscate dollars from private banks. The KSE 100 index lost 502.76 points or 1.23% to close at 40,504.76 points. Analysts say share prices fell because of Dar's statement that 
dollars held by commercial banks also belong to the country. Earlier, several reports had stated that after recent debt repayments, Pakistan's foreign reserves had fallen to $4.5 billion, which were not enough to cover even a month's imports.